right out of the car. So let's go back to the top. What are you guys' thoughts? So here's the first thing I got to say, and this is to go back up for what you said, Deuce, and to uh, CT's point. I agree with you about Ezra Miller as the actor in this movie. I did. I his portrayal was kind of very awkward, but to CT's point, that's where the writing came in perfectly because I like that they had both versions of them. Because if you only gave me Justice League Barry, I would have not been able to watch him for two hours. If you would have gave given me College Barry for two hours, I would not have been able to sit there and tolerate that. Because the both of them were there, you got to see the differences in the two and how they combat one another, which made that great writing for this movie and which would made that him stand out as his own flash. Yeah. And, and he raised did. himself. He taught him. That's that's the thing where I say the growth came from, because yeah. he wasn't able to grow without seeing a younger version of himself. Him seeing a younger version of himself re- made him realize, wow, this yeah, is how I come off to people. It did. This is exactly yeah. how I sound. And he <laughs> became a big brother. He's like, yo, would you stop goofing <laughs> off? Would you just focus for two seconds? And young Barry had to be like, hey, man, why are you being such a dick, bro? Yeah, I've yeah, done yeah, everything. Right. I've done every single thing that you've asked me for. And on the, the only thing he didn't say is, motherfucker, I got powers and you don't have shit. And I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> right? We in the back cave, like we'll just say, why would I not be extremely excited about this? And then older Barry had to confront his own grief, which he'd never been serious before that moment. So this was a hyperbolic chamber for the character of the Snyder verse flashes Barry mm-hmm. Allen because it forced him to grow up so quickly and it forced him to become a true hero without relying on Batman or other members of the Justice League and I think that's another reason that this movie was brilliant because the first thing he did was say all right uh Zod's here we got to find Superman we got to find Wonder Woman we got to find Aquaman we got to find Cyborg because they and he kept saying they they will be able to take him down. And in that, by nobody being available except for Batman, he realized, oh shit, Batman is not even here. Kara's dead. I have to save the world. I have to save the universe. And the only way that he could save the universe was from himself. So if that didn't give him a growth and um, a growth and a time shift for the character full circle development of Barry Allen. I don't know what will. And that's another part of why it was so fucking incredible because we saw this character literally reach within. And that's something that we haven't even been able to see. Ben Affleck, look, Ben Affleck looks the part of Batman. He acts the part of Batman. If he only had one film as a solo Batman, he would go down as my favorite Batman right under Michael Keaton. But he's not because he will never get a solo film. Yeah. So Michael Keaton in this movie, because we're talking about the good, as we get off to Barry Allen for a second, Michael Keaton is the greatest Batman that has ever existed. Oh my God, yes. Bro, he's that, the greatest. That fight scene was one of the most dopest Batman fight scenes. Like, it was like... What movie? Like, it was the like he was talking cash shit. He was whooping their ass. You can see fear. Like he like it was just so much Batman about it that was so amazing. Like I was just like yeah, and like even like how I expected an old man Batman to be. I'm like yeah, man. Like this is old man Batman. You know what I'm saying? Like hey, man. Like looks here. I, I'm I'm done. The only the only issue that I had with that old man Batman was like I feel like Bruce. No matter what, if Gotham can be saved. But as soon as the threat comes, Bruce jumping back in action. Like, I didn't like how he was kind of like, eh, whatever. Well, know? here's the thing. You got to, and I want y'all to, th- and I want y'all to start looking at every movie like this. And I'm not telling y'all to think like me, but I'm telling you to open your eyes and open your mind. This is for everybody watching as well. When you watch films, don't just look at what you're seeing on screen. Think about what this actually means for the character. Now, what you just said, Deuces, I'm going, first of all, this has nothing to do with Michael Keaton being my favorite Batman. I just want you to hear me out. Michael Keaton's Batman said Gotham is one of the safest cities in the world. They don't need me anymore. So what does the world become when you are a hero? Fuck just being Batman. What does the world become when the world doesn't need you? 
when the world doesn't need you, you stay in your cave and you're playing the rock music all day. You didn't grew your hair out. Your butler died, who was your last physical piece of family that knew you since you were a little boy. Yeah. Your sidekicks have probably all gone off to do whatever they wanted and live their life. You're left alone with these billions of dollars with this hospital that's clearly falling apart, but you <laughs> have all of these different things going for you. You just stay in the house. So if you're not needed as a hero, you just grow old and you enjoy your own company until this young man comes and says, yo, yeah. we need you. And yeah. even though he was kind of crotchety about it, he was like, you know what? Fuck it. You need me. I'm back. Didn't miss a step. Didn't That's what would happen to Batman. Because I so, loved it even with him picking out his wounds. Like yeah. to me, that was like, like I'm back, baby. Like he feeling it. Like I, I did love that moment of it, uh, of everything about that. Um, and like I said, I, I, I really like the portrayal. Like I, like Dion said, we can take Supergirl out of this movie. It doesn't change anything. Yeah. But I was highly interested more into her story. I liked it. Let's talk about Supergirl. Supergirl, yeah. and shout out to Melissa Benoist uh, from the television show. The television show end up failing not because of her, because she definitely represented an incredible Supergirl. She was an incredible. She is an incredible actress. She portrayed Supergirl as we would hope. The girl next door who believes in truth and justice. Right. However, the reason Supergirl, the show failed is because they got too political with their message and it turned people off who weren't uh with those values and beliefs it happens sometimes you just have to keep a superhero show about superhero stuff you can't Way too many boxes they try to check they off. try to yeah. check too many boxes and when you do that you turn off your main audience which are the superhero fans now with that said when you look at supergirl in this movie she was just kicking ass she yeah. was a dark version of supergirl she wasn't uh born and raised on earth She's like, look, I'm Kryptonian. The only human interaction that she had was with those Soviet soldiers who mm -hmm. were torturing her for the past 20 years and with Batman and the two Flashes who showed her compassion and love. So her loyalty was to them, less, less about the human race and more about these particular humans who saved yeah. her. And they were, she was willing to fight for them. And especially when she saw Zod, she's like, these are my people but I realized they're not my people. So I'll fight. So yeah. she's not fully trained by the time she goes, you got to understand Zod is a military general general. You because can't he, just beat him because you have the same powers. He does. Yeah. Because yeah, like, we don't know how long she'd been in that chamber with them Soviets either. I was just about to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Doing you know, God I didn't like what, <laughs> what you idea? say doing God knows what. No, man, I don't want to hear that. Oh, man. Man. Taking it that far, bro. <laughs> I mean, he was in the nightgown. You wild, bro. <laughs> she was she was in a prison to potato sack. Yeah. Um, but he, I like I and I, I'm glad that like I do like Zod as a villain. Zod has always been one of like one of my my favorite villains. Um, I I, I like that you know he stuck to his plan. Apparently, everybody was at the uh, battlegrounds when Zod was taking over because that was another thing. I was like Barry was there too. We just learned Bruce was there. Like right. how many people was there prematurely when Zod tore down what was it uh, Metropolis? Yeah. Like it seemed like everybody was yeah. at that that battleground. But then yeah. another thing that I noticed, I said we all noticed that that terraforming of the Earth, like how aggressive it was but when they show that dad going up and us knowing Ooh. that he was about to just hit the ground and yeah. like like bro i was like yo that is like and they, they knew because like the way that they put that car in front of the scene so you don't see the splat but yeah. i was like bro that is that is an aggressive way to go but you gotta remember this oh. too they didn't pay that scene off if we're talking they about that scene didn't. They you didn't. showed us this scene and you showed that Barry was scared. He was yeah. this 18 year old kid with flash powers and he was scared. He didn't. Now we know Barry now could have saved both of them, but yeah. at that time he was still figuring out his powers. He didn't get a chance to. So yeah. when you fast forward and you show this alternate timeline and you show that same son and his father running away from that car accident, you're now telling me this is the exact same thing is about to happen because they didn't, neither of them yeah. save them now. Yeah. So you didn't pay it off. You didn't get your Gwen and Garfield moment. No, yeah, also, no. also, how he outran that? Outran what? The uh how, how did he not get squished by this alien tech? Now I really I really had an issue with that. Like the father and son or Barry? Flat, yeah. Like, how did you not get squished? Because the dude that got squished, you're right here. Y'all not that far from each other. 
You well, how did you not get caught? They this? showed. I'll tell you. The reason that Flash, and this is, Flash had his son in his arm. Flash had the man's son in his arm. As reality started to hit, because they were all in slow-mo, and then they go back to regular time, as they're about to go splat, Barry activated his Flash electricity and was able to slow down before they hit the ground, and he was able to create his own momentum in flash time, and now he's able to get away right before the car landed on. Okay. Also, how, was that, how, was, how was that little child's bones and, and intestines not ripped out of his body? Because he just learned he just learned how to how to use his power. I'm glad you asked. Now, if you realize that's one through line, they, they were very careful about the logistics of uh speed in the film. So just like he explained what happened with the baby shower to younger Barry. And he said, look, you can only move objects. You can only move things around people, but you can't move people. And he's like, uh, he's like, I learned that the hard way. So him saying, I learned that the hard way, he could have made that kid throw up back then. They just didn't show it to us. True. But when, when a young flash moved Barry, when they were over in the Soviet union, that's why you saw uh, older Barry throwing up for so long is because he moved Barry, which is, kind of goes against flash saving anybody because <laughs> if he can't if he can't touch yeah. people and just yeah. without them throwing up what are we talking about remember save one and justice league it should be a lot of niggas throwing up a lot yeah. of niggas <laughs> also if this is and this was a funny something that somebody pointed out when he was having his like his his pre-date with iris right and then he discovered he, he came up with the idea i can go out and i can time travel and then he time traveled in that moment it was like, bro, finish the date. You can go back in time at any oh, given yeah. time. That's a good point. Yeah. Finish yeah. the date. Like, <laughs> but he didn't also have to cut it short. <laughs> it didn't even need to be a date. Like, I felt her coming over. First of all, I'm not an old fashioned guy. And I'm saying this as <laughs> someone who's watching a movie. Why did she come to his house so soon, bro? They were not even familiar like that for her to come to his crib. There was not enough chemistry right there no. for me to feel like, oh yeah, I'll come to this dude house who I ain't seen in years Since that college? I don't know about, who's kind of a weirdo too. Like, And also, Patty Spivet, I didn't like the portrayal of Patty Spivet or the other guy. Uh, I'm not familiar with him from the comic books, but Patty Spivet Spivet and Flash actually have a little, a little thing in different versions of Flash. And in this movie, in two separate timelines, one, she's his co-worker, which she always is. And in the second timeline, she is his roommate who is in a relationship with Albert. But Patty Spivet and the guy, Albert, Barry isn't teased at work by these people. Mm -hmm. Barry is a loner at work. He gets talked to crazy by the chief, of the captain of police, uh, mm -hmm. the captain of the police squad and his direct uh, superior. But for that to have happened by him having like these two meaningless sidekicks was ridiculous. Also, Barry was talking to Iris as if he was going to tell her he was the Flash because he's talking like, <laughs> I know I'm going to change this reality. I'll just go back and do this. I thought he was about to drop it in his apartment and then take off. Yeah, so I really did, too. I thought he was about to say, I'm the Flash and I just figured something out. I'm going to be right back. I <laughs> thought he was about to do that. And then he just took off. I'm like. Wait, did you really leave her in your apartment? Did you yeah. walk back in and say, great to meet you and close the apartment and not recognize, like, you're in my apartment right now? Never like, said that. Why wouldn't you say, oh, yeah, this is my apartment. I guess you should go, but you can stay or some shit like that. Yeah. Um, on the comedy tip, again, I do love that they kept on, like, joking on the stiffness of the neck of that bat suit. <laughs> like, even that <laughs> moment of Barry Allen ripping it off, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just love that because, you know, to me, and it, there was two moments where I like it should have paid off because if you remember in the Dark Knight, like um, that was a joke that they had when when um, um, yeah. Morgan Freeman was like, "You're going to want to move your neck, right?" And so then they changed the suit so that way he could move his neck. Well, the ability to my turn thing, your head, huh? Yeah. So my thing is this: is like they joked about the running of Barry Allen in this movie. Why y'all didn't change the running? Why joke on it if you're just oh, going to yeah. keep it? Oh, nigga, well, yeah. if you're just going to keep it, like just, he was running it. <laughs> He thought he was running fast. He said, <laughs> "That run was some bullshit, boy." Yeah, you know, I was like, I don't even understand what's the purpose of you going fast in that stance. Like, did nobody like was you saying Bolt not available to teach you how to? Yeah. I don't think <laughs> real. Is he, is he throwing lightning or something that that maybe he just never explained it? it. 
they did never explain. They touched on it when he said uh, about overheating and being able to distribute yeah. the lightning. So I took that as to mean that, like Dion said, he's throwing lightning as he runs, so he doesn't over, uh, so he doesn't catch too much lightning naturally by just doing like this. But even this, he could throw lightning up and down. So I don't know why they chose that run. Maybe it was just an actor choice. I think it, it was. was. It would have been perfect if it was a security guard watching out, watching out. <laughs> Oh, this is the best <laughs> that would have been, been a great cameo for somebody to go, hey, yo, come check this dude out. Now, but hey, I'm so glad you said it. Let's talk about cameos. Let's talk about the cameo. Ladies and gentlemen, my number one cameo, Christopher Reeves, bro. Okay. As our original Superman. I respect that. I felt like this was, shout out to Andy Mus uh, Musietti. This movie was a love letter to those of us who were fans of Michael Keaton and Christopher Reeve, Superman and Batman, and shout out to Supergirl from the original Supergirl, Supergirl film. But this was also a love letter to the character yeah. of Superman and the character of Batman. And it was a huge F you to the flash. And what I mean is <laughs> this is a huge F you to the TV universe it of was. flash. Yo, I'm, they didn't I'm, I'm show, with, I, I already know what you're going to say. Say it, CT. I'm they didn't you. show Barry Allen from television, Grant Gustin, and they didn't show John Wesley ship. How do you say as a director, I had an idea for so many cameos and DC said I could use whoever I wanted as long as they were a DC character and you don't put in the original TV's Flash and the the Flash has played it longer than any other Flash right. and say you didn't have time? Come that on, was, bro. I, no, I'm sorry, bro. That was so disrespectful to one of the cornerstones that built DC. Like, despite what you may want to say about the thing, that DC television run, the Arrowverse, that should have been acknowledged yeah. here. And, there, and the thing was... I didn't. I did not mind seeing the other cameo that I like, which was finally seeing Nicolas Cage as work. Oh no, 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 you can't. You can't just gloss over that. We gonna get no, that. No, no, we not. We not. But there, yeah. there is a, there is a part where he was shown twice, where that could have been a place for the whole universe for television. Yeah, but you also could have shown like, how dare you not show TV's Grant Gustin or TV's John Wesley Ship? But you have the gall, the audacity. <laughs> <laughs> to show Professor Zoom from that same TV universe. Wow. Bro, I'll take it. I'll take it one step further. If you remember, like movie show, I, I think you had jumped off at the time. Mm -hmm. But in, when they was doing their crisis across infinite earths, when mm -hmm. they had Grant Gustin meet Ezra Miller, mm -hmm. Ezra yeah, Miller at that point wasn't calling himself the Flash. No. So Barry said, Grant Gustin said, hey, I'm the Flash. You don't know me? And he's like, the Flash. So not only are y'all not using Grant Gustin, y'all not using the person that gave y'all the name. <laughs> But, but you showed, <laughs> hold on, because you, you got to get caught up, Will. We just okay. dropped a bombshell on saying, how do you not show Grant Gustin or John Wesley Ship, but you show Professor Zoom from that exact same TV universe as Jay Garrick? That's who they show. <laughs> yeah. Beyond that, you mean to tell me that you didn't call yourself The Flash before you met Barry Allen's The Flash, but you don't even show that cameo. Then on top of that, young yeah. deuces, when you show the cameo, you don't even pay off the people who saw that uh, that cameo because you don't even show the scene on how he got in and out of that realm. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. I was like, "Come no, on, Andy." You, yeah, y'all said just what I was just it, literally what I was about to say. It was a waste of the appearance from him in the original CW because and the CW too, didn't need the appearance. So it was already no, on fire. You just made that show like that was useless to show us like, oh, we'll give you it for TV, but it's not good enough for the movies. I'm like, that's a huge slap in the face. And I know this next one ain't a slap in the face. This is just for me personally. Um, why the fuck was Dean Kane? He's oh, not doing nothing. Why bro. could he have not given a cameo? Because that's my Superman all, right there. That's my number two Superman. Yeah. Nobody yeah. is Christopher Reeves, and I've said this in a, I've said this before. My supermen are Christopher Reeves, <laughs> Dean Kane, Henry Cavill. You don't, Come you on. don't. How dare you disrespect Dean Kane? Dean Kane 
gets the shaft because of Whoa. I guess people would say his political views. But I'm like, bro, Dean Cain held us down held us as down. Superman for years, and he was an incredible Superman, and he's part Asian, so you get Asian <laughs> Superman, bro. I was like, yo, how did we skip? Him in this thing. I was like, yo, if you didn't want to do the TV CW shit, fine. You could have gave us a 3D rendering of Dean Kane. Like, right. yo, yeah, he embodied everything from that 90s yeah. Superman from the everything. cartoon. He looked like the cartoon Superman. He, he looked he carried everything. What well, gave us the old school version of it from the fonts that they use in the TV show? The old school. I was like, yo, that was the perfect bubble that they made to give Superman for a television show. You can watch Lois Clark, Lois and Clark in the new adventures of Superman today. Dang. Dean Kane. Today. Is the Superman that I was first introduced to because I didn't get a chance to watch original Superman with Christopher Reeves except on reruns of television as a kid. You know, they'll right. show a movie in a minute. But yep. Dean Cain, I remember the premiere of Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman on television with my mother and being like, yo, ma, this is Superman. Do you understand how I felt? And you, I hope you cut all of this stuff together that I'm saying about Dean Kane, Will, because he follows oh, yeah. me on IG. Oh, no, 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 no. This, this is going to be the clip because we the same Dean way. Kane, you just said, too. Dean Kane is single handedly carried the torch of Superman since Christopher Reeves was Superman. And for him not to get acknowledged is disrespectful. That man is the, is to, to me, the Bl Wesley Snipes blade of Marvel. <laughs> they okay. held that man I, DC. because if it was, it, oh, I mean, of, D, of DC, my bad, of DC, yeah. Blade, Blade, and Marvel, Superman, yeah. of DC. I agree with you completely because that was the two one thing. Like you said, my mom watched that with me. Like that's the first thing me and my mom watched for a comic book character. Yeah, we both could enjoy. Yeah. Oh man, this was the Flash movie. Where's the stop? Yeah, they did a bunch of Batman. They did a bunch of Supermans. They didn't have like. You know, Holly Berry as Catwoman. Hey, why ain't they had Catwoman? They don't have much. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not that. And the only reason we bring up, and this is not uh, completely shitting on Andy Machietti, but you can, they showed that this. I started this with this was a love letter to more so Batman and yep. Superman fans yep. because they showed Christopher Reeves, they showed George Reeves, who was the first Superman incarnation on television, uh, besides one person before him in the 30s, I believe. And then you showed Adam West. Yeah. But we, without showing Adam West, if you're going to show Adam West, you got to show me the animated Kevin Conroy, especially since we lost him. <laughs> and you can't show Dean Cain, but this is where I think they got out of it. They didn't show... Until they showed Adam West, they hadn't shown any TV iterations of any of the heroes. And then oh, when they okay. showed Adam West, I'm like, okay, so you can show Adam, but you can't show Grant Gustin and Dean Cain and John Wesley shit, bro. Yeah. yeah. And then, so now let's get to let's well, actually, get to the one who, that blew us who away. Was the big three though, who was the big three in DC? The you big know, three: Superman, the, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Wonder yeah. Woman. They ain't showed no Wonder Woman. But they, 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 they had Gal Gadot. They had Gal Gadot. Yeah. But what about the original? They could have used her. Linda Carter. Linda they, Carter. I think the reason that they did not show Linda Carter is because Linda Carter has gotten her cameo in love with Wonder Woman, too. Yeah, she did, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, they've shown her before. But I'm more so upset we didn't see an appearance of Dean Cain. We didn't see Grant. We didn't see John Wesley Ship. And yeah, no matter how you feel about the TV role? show... Well, come on, brother. Anyway, so when you show... <laughs> when you show the cameo of Jay Garrick with stock footage from the TV show Flash, but you don't, you say you don't have enough time to show TV's Flash, Who it blew that? me away. And I know they had and, time. And the thing was, too, the easiest thing you could have given us the same exact scene from the show. That's yeah. all we wanted. All we had to do was show the world, do this, and see the two of them standing there. Eyeing each other and him looking Bro, at it as it's colliding. That's there's it. So, there's so many scenes in the show of Flash of him looking at the universe in general. Like I said, you know, I get it. If you want to have him actually there shoot new footage, yeah. But like both of y'all said, there's so much stock footage that's already set that it could have fit in that room. Yeah, we see it on CW commercials when I dare to defy <laughs> the niggas looking up. Like you could have used one of those. <laughs> the problem was the suit. I think if anything, if they could admit it. And rarely will you ever see a company admit that they made a mistake. The problem was the suit. You showed Flash in a brand new Flash costume. 
So by the time he went into his into the speed force to go back in time the first time, he was already wearing the new suit. Uh, okay. Right. So when he goes back in time and he pops his head up and he sees the grocery store, he sees the babies, him saving himself. It would have been better and would have made more sense for him to have started the movie in the costume he had on in the Justice League film. Yes, so yes. that way, when he goes back in time, he could have saw, oh, man, I met the Flash. Oh, this is crazy. OK goes back into his present day and then maybe his suit is destroyed and then he's like uh he's like oh i gotta get out of here and he grabs a ring out of his drawer and that could have been the new suit that he was working on and that could have been the suit for the rest of the film easy fixes also too now that does and then okay now to that point though it kind of does throw off that and seeing that or why that wouldn't work because like you just said why would he revert back to his to suit? that old suit yeah yeah because not because now i am kind of confused because does with that being like where we are with the flash now are the did are the ramifications of what's going to happen in the justice league still a thing and is he still going to hit us with the you know lois is the key like that's it was the always thing. her yeah because he's not only know that suit, and it looked like an evolution of his first suit and that's another problem so this is another reason the snyder verse is done and i wish snyder not even would because this is property of Warner Brothers, but I wish he would just release every single thing he shot because just throw it out there. The thing that pissed me off about the Snyder verse is through all of that, they say, All right, here, make the rest of your movie, man. Here's 20 or 30 million dollars. Mm -hmm. You only show us a snippet of the Martian Manhunter, you show us because of the internet pictures of the Green Lantern. I don't know what Justice League you could ever have without the Green Lantern, bro. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. So how do you have the Green Lantern not in the movie? How do you show a snippet of the Martian Manhunter, but he doesn't join the fight against Darkseid? That doesn't make sense to him to be on the sidelines well, this long. Well, to the point, too, though, then I think that also comes in where we got to start also leading towards Warner Brothers on that because of what they were trying to do with Green Lantern and everything. Maybe they didn't want that interfering with what they have planned down down the line and stuff like that so that also their plan what you're right but their plan was trash because was. they were like we're gonna have a green lantern and he's gonna be gay hey can he just be good before we start talking about his orientation no no, no he's gonna be gay listen man that's not his identity i'm sure he's gonna do other things right. from nine o'clock until noon without just being with whoever his significant other is so my point is i'm glad that that got scrapped because uh james gunn was like yo we're gonna do a green lantern and it's gonna be john stewart and hal jordan and it's like yeah. oh thank yeah God. Just give, give us like you said give us the the original first One yes thing, i do i do need to go back on though i need to give ct his props because i've watched so many flash breakdown movies right and when mm -hmm. they get to the um about how to explain time travel in this world ct gave the most simplest version Everybody is so convoluted, and mm -hmm. I've just been going back to the ABC. The, yeah. That that bro, you broke it down. <laughs> in the most easiest I said that makes exact sense on what we're seeing here because yeah. that's another thing. I'm like, I, I wanted to get like, how did y'all feel about the Chrono Bowl and the whole time travel timeline? Like, how did y'all feel about those scenes? Because I didn't necessarily let me, like it. Let me let me go ahead and light this fire now because I've uh -oh. been this latest. This movie did what Spider Man dumbass third movie was trying to do way fucking better. That's what they mm. did. These people showed the multiverse better. They did cameos better. They tied in this story to pay homage to everything else way better. And I like how they showed these different ways, especially with the Speed Force, because it wasn't just a regular stream. It wasn't just us seeing these cracks and fictions. Like they really gave us, hey, here's the Chrono Bowl. Mm -hmm. This is your time. Fix it. And I like how it was like, okay, we're going and we're breaking. They kind of remind me of Interstellar. And yeah. I was like, I like mm -hmm. how Interstellar did it when they when he broke through the black hole and you saw all the different stuff. I like that they gave us that. One thing I will, I, I still got to say, I will call BS on to that is the CG. I get what the, the director had stated. It was like, yo, the CG isn't bad. We made it like that because it's through Barry's view. Yeah. And it's kind of a water world like thing. I would have been okay if they would have just made it a regular CG and not this distorted yeah. looking thing. Because it looked creepy to me. For me, it was kind of a little, <laughs> yeah. it was a little much on a big ass screen. I'm like, Ugh. yeah. Right. See, I didn't I didn't necessarily like it, but it didn't take me out. I I, I appreciate them what they tried to do. You got to think. 
we've been dealing with multiverse. Like, there's so many properties telling a multiversal story that we've heard it every which way for like the past five years in so many ways, right? So I respect DC for like, all right, we just got to do something different. Like, and I give them that. Like, this looks completely different. I also like the little small details. People didn't realize in the Chrono Bowl when he was running, the bottom of it was filled with sand and it's supposed to represent the sands of time. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I actually kind of fuck with that, that symbolism and everything like that. Um, I just, for me, just, I, I did, like I said, it didn't hit. Like, it, it, it came down to like, I get it. You want to be different. You don't want to tell it the exact same way as the other ones, but like, I feel like other ways have worked. Whereas like, this is now to me canon, but like I, I can say, I respect them for trying to give us something different visually. This is what I love. Yeah. I don't mind the CG and I'll tell you why the CG by it being the watery look. Now you can create Christopher Reeves standing and looking ripped, more ripped than he did in his own actual movie. Even though for his time, he was ripped. You know what I'm saying? Number two, correcting the wrongs of the studio. Meaning, uh, first of all, there have been many studio heads at Warner Brothers for the past 40 and 50 years that were idiots. Meaning, and I say that respectfully and disrespectfully, <laughs> there is no reason we shouldn't have seen Supergirl and Superman on screen at the same time for their perspective movies if they both had one. Two, there's no reason that Christopher Reeves got in his accident, I believe, in 1995 or 96, and we didn't see Christopher Reeves and Michael Keaton's Batman and Superman team up. There is no reason that we should not have seen John Wesley Shipp's Flash, Linda Carter's Super, uh, Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman yeah. team up at least once like these are Dang. things that are ridiculous yeah. so like with the cg justice league with the cg that's why it made sense yeah, because we could see possible. a recreation of christopher reeves and we could yeah. see supergirl and we could see nicholas cage play superman it. which was nothing but a scrapped project from warner right. brothers that got its popularity and heat online so for us to even be able to see that scene created and for us to see the scene happen with him and this giant spider Which, Superman yeah. from Superman Lives is crazy. Now, did, did any of y'all watch the documentary of that? I'm pretty sure CCU did, The Death of Superman Lives. Well, no. I want to see it, though. Oh. I'm surprised you did, yeah, because it's a great, because it tells the story of everything that they did, like how far Bless they you. got into production, um, the storyline. So, you know, and so when I saw the spider, I'm like, oh, shit. I'll watch it today. Right. I was like, oh, shit, because I knew that that was that storyline. So because of everything that they showed us in the trailers, all the Easter eggs, this was my favorite Easter egg. It was the one that I didn't expect. You see it Michael was the B. one Jordan that came Superman? out of nowhere. Huh? That's what Michael B. Jordan is doing. <laughs> hey, I go, hey, I'm not going to lie. I, I, was kind, I was kind of waiting for that. I was like, maybe they might hit at the, the Black Superman. But when I, mean, I, saw, but when I saw Nicolas Cage do it, and I was just kind of like, you know what? I said, this is hey. why they didn't cash you. Yeah, I see now why they didn't cash you. I would have. Never been a long, has it been a long year, uh, Superman? Besides uh, Smallville, just when he had the black suit when he came back from the. Uh, oh yeah. Back. yeah, and that was a cartoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, never I saw. Well, actually, uh, Dean Kane did a black suit version of Superman, but he didn't have long hair. Now, so one I, thing that CT talked about with the alternate endings, somebody yeah. gave a perspective about an ending that I was like, oh, that actually probably would, I felt like it would have went better. So mm -hmm. remember, I think we talked about it in the group chat or we talked about it on the last episode where I told you like the the early pre uh, pre uh, screenings that they were giving everybody, they said that it was, you know, uh, the last 10 minutes was cut off, right? Mm -hmm. So the way that the movie ended in like for those early screenings was when Bruce walks out, all you see is the feet and you hear Ezra Miller say, who the fuck is that? And then it goes off. Now and they so oh, they were saying that that was better because it's like if we're getting a whole new Batman and we don't know who it is, that's a better ending because then it again it re reopens the conversation like oh shit so yeah who is our next Batman who was that and you can retcon that with you know with the new films. Hold on, Deuce. Here's why I like that because of several reasons. One, it shows the consequence that I, I wish they would have always kept showing with the Flash that. Flashpoint destroys the Flash, and he never goes home. Like mm. once he leaves that timeline, he can never come back to that timeline, and that's the consequence of Flashpoint. Yeah. And so I like that they show Bruce to show like, oh shit, I did not get back to my timeline. And the second that leads into that is now, uh, but what messes us up is the Easter egg is that 
you could have left him there and that ended everything to start over with the new flash. Yeah. He never came yeah. home, never st- never came back. That was his consequence. Now we can fully start over with the new flash mm-hmm. and how we moving into this legacy. That's why I like that ending like that. But here's the thing. The opportunity <sighs> And unfortunately, this has to do with probably James Gunn's plans because you guys are now in the James Gunn era. Yeah. This is the DCU now. If I'm the head of DC and I know The Flash is coming out, I'm going to say, you know what? I got to cast my Flash right now. I got to cast my Flash right now because what you guys just said about how that ending could have been, I got to cast my Flash right now and I got to cast my Batman right now because at the end of that movie, all I got to do is show uh, Barry Allen showing up in the courtroom and or looking in the mirror or actually you show this is what you show. This is how you cut it. You show the Flash's father in the courtroom and him doing the case like they just did. And then him turning around, his dad turning around and to camera. This is to camera and him saying, yeah. ah, we did it, son. Right. And we don't see Barry Allen. Woo. We just see a hand Woo. reaching back to his father. And yep. he's like, we did it, son. He's like, yeah. And then he gets outside and then you see the back of Barry's head. And maybe Iris comes up and she's like, Barry, you did it. And he turns around. And he said, yeah, we did it. That's a different flash. That's number yeah. one. Two, he picks up the phone as the audience is in shock. Uh, hey, oh, Bruce, I can't wait to tell you what just happened, man. I, I, I messed things up, but I fixed things. Anyway, uh, I can't wait to see you again, and I'll tell you all about it. And he's like, I'm pulling up now. He pulls up. He gets out the car. He says, who the fuck is that? And now this is our new super, This is our new Batman. Yeah. You had the opportunity to yeah. show all of this. All of that. But and you were waiting you, to see you, how the sales went. And to your point, you could have combined those two to introduce both the new Flash and Batman. Yep. That's what I just said. Yeah, man. That's what you're doing. <laughs> okay. okay. I was like, wait, wait. I was like, wait. I thought you had to say that. I pulled the dude. Wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Dude. Because when I do that, y'all go way harder at me. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. we need to give Will the whole. That's what I said. Give I pulled him the deuces deuce. treatment. <laughs> I, pulled, I pulled the deuce just now. That's what I did. He was nice. He said, uh, that's what I said. Right. Well, that's, that's the only reason I didn't go hard on Will is because I genuinely know he's dealing with a lot right now because the fucking nachos <laughs> over there. But what's funny is while I'm saying everything, Will is like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm like, oh, this nigga just waiting to talk. He didn't hear shit that I said. Because <laughs> they keep like, I don't understand why they ain't never been this loud doing this shit. Now, for yeah. some reason, he said, Yeah, we can hear you, nigga. Yeah, every every everybody everybody named mama wanted to come fix the sink now for some reason. You know why it is? It's like kids. Like when a kid is like, say for example, you babysitting your nephew or your little brother or sister. When you and it's just y'all two, they quiet, they ain't bothering you. As soon as you get on the phone, hey, hey, look what I can do over here. You're like, hey man, get the fuck out of my mouth, fam. I'm on the phone. Yeah. Now so I heard at the very end it was an Aquaman uh and Flash. You heard about that? I didn't get to yeah. see it. I walked Got away. See, oh, so it, and it, it, why it, did it, you leave? I had these restroom, uh, and you couldn't <laughs> come back. <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> I had these restroom like third act. I was like, "Ooh, oh, ooh. you wow, oh yeah. wow." So yeah, you didn't see the ending? No, yeah. when the credits start rolling. Oh, uh, gotcha. yeah, yeah. I seen the. I seen what y'all talking about right, right there with the Batman thing. Oh yeah. So yeah. The, the scene, the scene that you missed, with, and it was really, it was just a drunken Arthur Curry. And Flash really trying to talk to him, telling him like who he is, telling him like, yeah, we need you and everything like that. And then you know, he gathers himself and they walk out into the alley. Like it wasn't like anything crazy, it didn't really set up much. It just confirmed, like, okay, yeah, the connection. They could have showed that right after the movie ended, like a super mid-credit joint. We did we should not have had to wait for all the credits for that. Because when you wait for all the credits, your expectations get higher the longer the credit sequence is. Yeah. I mean, you know what sucks about the Flash and uh, uh, Aquaman is it's like somebody saying, "Hey, do you want to come to my first wedding to support it? We we're gonna be in Aruba. I need you to just fly out there." <laughs> it's like, it's like, why you say your first marriage? Because I'm getting married again, and it's like I'm getting married in L.A. It's like, hey, why do you want me to invest in your first marriage? It's like, why are we supporting this? Cause they're setting up nothing. They setting up like, nothing. All this for nothing, dude. That was that's nice. another reason why. Like again, like I said, you know, we, we, we want good standalone movies, but we also like a connected movie, right? 
because yeah. of all the cameos, it felt like a connected movie, but it didn't pay off. That's what irritated me. And then also, and this is this was the, this was a slight irritant. This it didn't take away from the movie, but afterwards I thought about it. I said, bro. This whole movie, Barry did not at once question who killed his mom. He didn't go. He didn't do any yeah. research. He didn't look into it. There was not one moment that he said, who killed yeah. my mom? <laughs> I still think daddy did it. Not Pause. one. You wow. Yeah. Now, this is another reason why, as filmmakers, I get annoyed. Because we all know that in the story of The Flash, the reverse Flash is the person that kills Barry's mother. Now, in this movie, there was a way to introduce the reverse flash outside of the cameo I just mentioned mm -hmm. by you just showing you can show a shadowy figure and we just have to wonder who is that shadowy figure that we saw running away, who Barry saw running away out of the back door when he saw his mom and he had to decide to tend to his mom or go after the shadowy figure. And that could have haunted him. I should have went after the shadowy figure. I should have went after the shadowy figure. And then when he becomes the flash, not only does he go after the shadowy figure, but now he's even more confused. So by the time he goes to the chrono bowl and the guy knocks him out of it, he could say you, and he could have been wrong because yeah. he knows that there's more than just that one. You, but here's my question. How mad would you have been to find out it wasn't him and it was Savitar? You'd have been pissed about that, and you didn't get to see Reverse Flash. That's no, what I would have. I would have been anyway. angry. This you got to set up. Okay, so superhero movies for the past uh, since Spider Man Two. I'm sorry, since Batman Returns. Damn, that's not the truth either. Ever since Superman Three or Superman Two, there's always been two villains in every superhero movie. Right. So you look at Superman one, you had Zod and his two generals. Uh, he also was Lex Luthor in Superman one. In Man of Steel? No, oh, no Superman one. Superman Christopher Reeves. Oh, yeah. Reeves. Oh, I know he was in two, but I don't know if he was in one. What was one about Zod? Right. And his two. People. One was about Zod. Yeah. I want to say he was featured, but I don't think he was like the enemy enemy. OK, so you got Lex Luthor and you got Zod and his two generals. Yeah. Um, then when you go to Superman two through four, he had two villains. Then you go to Michael Keaton's Batman. He had the Joker and I believe he fought. Damn, I think it was just the Joker for that. Oh, no, it was the Joker. And technically it was the Falcone guy yeah. Uh, yeah. or Marco. It was, you know, the Falcones and the Maroney's have always been Batman villains. So yeah. that was a lesser known person for Batman one, because that person went against the Joker and a Joker came back and got his revenge. Um, Batman Christian Bale begins. It was uh, Ra's al Ghul mm -hmm. and it was Scarecrow. Yep. Batman, the dark Knight. It was the Joker. It was two face Batman. Yeah. Then the third one, it was against Bane and uh, Talia al Ghul. Um, just so you know, um, L Luther was in the first one. He was played by um, Gene. Gene Hackman, yeah. Thank yeah. you. So every movie has had two villains. Even if you go to Batman Forever, Two-Face and Riddler. Batman and Robin, uh, Poison Ivy, Mr. Freeze, and Bane. So then even when you get to Batman versus Superman, you had uh, Lex Luthor and you had uh, Doomsday. Yep. So superhero movies, without going to every single one, have 80% of the time have had two villains. So when you look at the Flash, you could have had the two villains and the, and one got away. Like I just said it up for you perfectly. Show us the reverse Flash Ooh. and then have him deal with Savitar. And you know, if they if they wanted to be like a, a film buff and go off of like past movies where they only had the one and it didn't work, they can go off of that second Fantastic Four. That was one of my biggest issues was yep. like the like the main fight felt like it should it was going to be a mid fight and it turned yeah. out being the climax and I was like wait what and so yeah. it was like and that was a movie that showed like they tried to do it with just the one villain and it didn't work so like it also adds to you know credence to exactly what you're saying on the other and track. you can do and I don't want to paint the picture that you can't do a one villain superhero film you can but there's so much exposition and so yeah. many other things that the hero has to focus on yeah. because even if it's not a villain the hero has to fight against something else. So is he fighting against a physical person or is he fighting against something that he can only fight as his regular day-to-day -day persona? You know what I mean? Reality or something, yeah. Well, or it's like if you're Superman and Clark Kent, you gotta be, I'm not even acknowledging that. If you're Superman and Clark Kent, 
you got to be able to have a race against the deadline for Clark Kent and be fighting a villain and both of those kind of coincide or you have two villains. But you can't just have one villain. What about I mean, didn't he, look, would you say he kind of had that with Savitar, which is technically himself, and Zod, though? That was kind of technically both of his main villains. Point but, anyway. And that's what I was going to get to. He had Zod because he had Zod, but at the same time, uh, he was more so fighting against himself yeah. and Savitar because yeah, yeah. so much shit was going on. He just destroyed the universe. And he's got to stop this guy from saving the universe. I mean, from destroying the universe. And Zod was never his villain because he never fought Zod. And that's what yeah. I was going to get to next. I think that what also suffers from this movie, and they should have took the Batman route or the joke like Joker route, where you try to make this a standalone movie. Because if you bring in instead of bringing in Zod and give him his Flash villain, like a different villain, you can still sell everything that you're telling with this story. But again, I think like even what Dion said with this paying off not going anywhere because we got used to this connected universe and they brought in so many elements to connect this universe. If they would have stuck to this and really try to get, at least give it a standalone movie, then that takes away that. Like, okay, I'm not expecting this, you know. I'm going in like I went to with the Joker and with uh, with Joker and with the Batman, knowing that this is his own property. Yes, this character was from another movie, but make this movie feel like its own solo thing. Then it gives you uh, you now you can still have cameos and everything. Just don't connect it as much as y'all did, and that because it, it takes oh. away if the, if it doesn't pay off. Now you really feel left out. But but here's but here's the thing to that though. I don't think an original origin of where this stuff was going would have been the payoff. Because the thing is, too, like now you have to tell me the story of Flash while telling me the story of Reverse Flash, and you have to tell me where Savitar is coming from. Plus, you're trying to throw in these cameos. So, what I started to like was yeah. the in between of it as one, we're reacting to Justice League. So, it's not even really a full mm-hmm. focus on him. This is the reaction to after all this has happened mm-hmm. and where we're picking up, kind of sort of like to CT's point with the Batman thing of that in between from Gotham being safe to where he is now. Yeah. This is where we're seeing him. So, I was kind of glad that we didn't fully jump into here because we know Flash doesn't know who Reverse Flash is. So, I didn't want that to distract from the main thing, which was his mother. And yeah. that's why I was glad like we didn't have so many things to take us away from that. And to the same point, like CT said, not having Iris West in it either, because yeah. I, that yeah. wasn't necessary all for this film. There were no other details. Yeah, we could have oh, left oh, out. My, my apologies, my ignorance. So there was a reverse flash and Savitar in this movie? No. no. Yes, but no. So we all know that the reverse flash is the person that kills the flash mother. Yeah. The Flash's mother. But in this movie, they just focus on Savitar. And I, I respect how they handled Savitar in this Me film too. Too. because even I did not realize that it was Savitar that was hunting him. I thought it was uh, the Death Flash. Well, I was going to ask you that. Did they confirm that that was Savitar? Because like when, when I saw it, I assumed it was Savitar mm-hmm. at first, but then I was like, well, they're not saying the name, and I'm like, that's a big name, so I didn't hear it. They never said the name, but you if you know how Savitar looks, you know that that's right. Savitar. And, and that's why I was like, it's yeah. definitely Savitar, but I'm like, yeah. they're not telling me anything. And they showed, what I appreciate, they showed the origin of Savitar yeah. being, yo, I'm you, just later, and the, the shit that was so addictive was him saying, I'm so close, I almost yeah. got it figured out. And it's like, nigga, you've been at, and he said, How long have you been doing this? <laughs> like, nigga, how long you been that close? <laughs> no, you close. I, I, I got a carry to one. It's I got a carry to one. <laughs> like, there's no way if him, and that goes to show one, this is how I knew it was going to be Savitar. When they showed 18 year old Barry kill one of Zod's generals. Yeah. I yeah. was like, oh shit. And even older Barry was like, whoa, we don't yeah. do that. <laughs> but him seeing him do that was like, oh shit. You don't think like I think because you're 18 years old and you don't know how valuable these powers are. And you don't yeah. know that with great power comes great responsibility. And you don't know that the trials and tribulations to becoming a hero. And him saying, you made me a hero. I'm the flash. And it's like, no, you're not. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's what was so brilliant. So so him getting stabbed, he remember him got he, him getting him getting shot in the leg, right? Yeah. So obviously he can walk. So should have healed way faster. Right. But but also he got stabbed numerous times. So are they not like 
hurting him because he kept going back in time, kept getting stabbed for unlimited amount of times. So, so in the back, face, cut, leg. So, like, is he, how is he still running this fast? I'm assuming adrenaline kick in at that point. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because remember, again, what, what CT was saying, like the addiction of I'm this close. So mm-hmm. you got that uh, you got that adrenaline going. You not really at that moment. Because, man, he, you, you got to think. He's been running back and forth that whole time, back and forth. He never really had a moment to stop and think what I'm doing. You know, no, so he what, probably so what? like that that adrenaline probably was kicking in why he wasn't impact. I, that's what I'm assuming, but like they didn't really yeah. explain why that wasn't impacting him either. Well, to Dion's case too, though, like also and and CT's other healing factor. How long were you in that point in time before you came back to the chrono bubble? So when he went back, he could have been standing there, like you said, with the adrenaline running heels and catches yeah. that spike again, runs back in, catches, and that could have been the consistent healing from the time he was sitting at that point in time. What if what if Zai was catching on like here he is? <laughs> Got his ass again. They was waiting for him to No, come. he technically did. He, he did. did when they were doing the tornado and he slowed down. And mm-hmm. saw where he was at and got him. And I was just like, I was waiting for somebody to do that in this movie. I was like, Yeah, can't Kryptonian see him? Like they can slow down and catch I, that's him. What right? I, I was like, didn't I'm like uh old Barry should have known that. He was like, Yeah, well, no, we're definitely faster than Superman. Like, uh, bro, did you forget? Yeah. No, <laughs> but no, but again, he would not know that because he has not fought no Kryptonians outside of Zod. Remember? No, old no, old Barry in Justice League when Superman caught him. Oh, Barry should have remembered that. Oh, at that point. Well, yeah, but you you can't equate that to all Kryptonians. You could just think that's Superman. I mean, true, true. But I would, I mean, you know, Kyle, I can, I can, but I, I can see him together. Over- like, wait a minute, hold on. I see your point, but I can see him overlooking that at that being a Kryptonian thing. I can the funny moment, bro, is when young Barry kept coming back into the chrono pole, talking to older Barry. He's like, all right, come on, ah, just one more time. Let's get it in. And he's like, hey, are you, go, you just gonna leave me out there by myself? Come on, I need you. Let's go. And then he comes back. He's like, where are you? <laughs> and Barry just like, it's just like because he was realizing he really oh did. we're destroying shit nothing's this is an inevitable point nothing's gonna get fixed like this and this guy doesn't realize it it's up for me to stop him and in me trying to stop him now older him comes to attack me because he realizes i'm the problem if i'm not here to stop him nobody's gonna stop him yeah. so if he gets me out the way he could keep doing this to eternity and keep destroying universes that movie was so brilliant for the nitpicky things that i've mentioned already this movie is just phenomenal it's probably the best dc film since batman returns i said that's what i said i said top three dc films right now yeah and even and even to to your point earlier deuce how you saying you didn't like him with the trash pickup thing that's what made this such a great writing to ct's point because Look what happens when we put you in the forefront. You're not ready. And because we left you to your own devices, what happened? You almost destroyed the universe. Yeah. This is why we put you right here so we get you to the point you need to be, which was another reason why I was glad that they didn't give us so much of his stuff and throw a first flash in there, throw all of this in there before that, because I can see how they were building to get flash there. And here's the thing, he's going to be, from a business standpoint, if this would have made the money that they wanted, he would have been the Flash moving forward. And just based off of how much money they've spent on this legal situation. Hey, I was about to say, that's going to be my next point. I understand why they didn't scrap it. These niggas blew up everything in this movie. (laughs) Everything. For them to have spent the money that they did on this film, and don't forget, because nobody's mentioning this, this movie has had some really hard start stops before yeah. it was even made. Yeah, we yeah. went through, I think, three or four directors mm-hmm. before this thing even saw the light of day. So with all of that money down the drain and the money that they uh, lost by not being able to promote it and the writer's strike and the money that they spent on uh, Ezra Miller's legal situations and getting that uh, swept under the rug, they're like, look, if this movie makes some money, He's just going to be the flash moving forward. And it didn't help that the director said, yeah, there's no way we do a sequel without Ezra Miller. Yeah. So he's going hard. They even said publicly, did. no matter what his legal problems was, this movie was coming out. We were like, what? But, and one thing they proved very much, though, uh, Jonathan Majors is not coming back as Kang. Really? Because what are you talking about? 
you no, that? like you, but if you see it because of your history and what happened, I really believe that also played a factor in why people didn't go see this movie. Like, yo, I don't oh. see this guy. Like I don't support what he did. Right. I don't support so I know, his actions. I know three actions. women. I know three yeah. women who would say I'm not going. I'm not going to see this movie. And that t- oh, you can definitely tell this took this took a hit from that. Man, you come straight out of a comic.